everybody, Sue here from She Sells. Started off on the bumpy part of the road. Um, I am headed out sourcing today locally. I'm, um, I think I have 118 miles round trip uh, clocked into en route and about 18 stores. The first five of them are just a quick grocery store stop because I'm looking for a discontinued item. So I really took my time this morning. I cleaned up the house. I got my boxes all prepared. I, I took the dolly out of my, um, the, out of the RAV because it was kind of in the way. When I had the, I, I took out the, the back seats so I'd have more room for two layers of boxes there. And I used to kind of set it in between the seats and it stood up on its side and I can't really do that right now. So, cause I just don't need it today. I, I took that out. And a lot of times when I'm sourcing locally, locally, I just run out and get started. And then, you know, the bags pile up and then I think, should I stop and get some boxes? So I really tried to take my time this morning and prepare like I do when I go out of town. I mean, obviously I'm not taking my Dymo and all that, but, um, but you know, I just want to be prepared and just start boxing as I shop. The other thing I'm going to do differently is... I've gone back and forth with putting all the receipts in my purse or keeping them in the bags. I still have the same issue when I keep them in the bags. If I go to a store and I get two or three bags worth, it's like, which, which other bag did this receipt go with? And it's a little difficult when you're doing clothing because store to store, it's the same. I could be going to like Kohl's or Macy's or pennies and I'm buying the same items but at different stores sometimes they're different prices at different stores so I really need to know what each item cost so this is what I'm gonna start today I'm going to post it note like say number one on the receipt I don't want to write on the receipt itself I like to keep my receipts clean in case I need to ever send those into Amazon scan them and send them into Amazon so I don't want writing all over them and then I am going to put on another post-it note uh, just throw it inside the bag receipt number one receipt number one receipt number one if there's four bags and then just you know the same thing with receipt number two receipt number three even if there's only a single bag I don't want them to get confused so just in case I miss a bag or something. I'm gonna do that for every store. Now the grocery store, I'm just looking for one item and so far they've all been the same at every store. So unless there's a difference, I may just keep those in my purse. And as you all know, I use a fanny pack when I'm sourcing, I don't have a purse. But that's so I have two hands free to scan and do whatever. So, all of you who watch me regularly have heard me talk about this transition, transition, I'm in a transition, and I was really thinking about it this morning, and my good friend Karen from Just Ask Karen, she's also on the Prof Sales Show, made a comment, either a comment or wrote it on her Instagram, which I have written on my board, and it says, transition is not best place to stay something like that or transition is not where you want to stay and I've suddenly realized that I've been so wishy-washy about this transition it all kind of started with my husband he was gonna be in surgery he was gonna have surgery and be home recuperating for a few weeks and I wouldn't be able to do my normal running out sourcing anymore the other thing that happened around the same time and even really before he went in for surgery was my sales started going down and I was trying to compare with last year. And the problem was last year from maybe February, March through mid-June, I was sourcing at all the Toys R Us going out of business sales. I believe after I all said and done, I went to 36 different stores and some of them many times. So I was literally coming home with, you know, thousands of dollars in product every time I went out sourcing, which was a lot. So it was 
it's really hard to compare because I didn't have that sourcing opportunity anymore. So I, I kind of went from, okay, you know, what, how am I going to source differently? Am I, what new categories am I going to get into? What new type of sales am I looking for? And I, I would decide something and then somehow I would talk myself out of it. And then I would decide the next thing and again talk myself out of it. And I feel like I've even done that while I'm out doing RA. I talk myself out of more items than I talk myself into. Well, let's put it this way. I don't, I don't talk myself into items. It's either a good item or when I have to try and talk myself into an item, I'd leave it. Because I'll say, you know, well, if it doesn't do well on Amazon, I could sell it on eBay or I'm gated. And Yes, very occasionally I will buy something RA for eBay, but not if there's somewhat small margin and it's going to take too long to sell. Now, that's a little bit different now that I have a lister because obviously when I wasn't necessarily listing all the time, I really didn't want those excess eBay items. But that aside, that's not really my issue. So I would go to a store and I would see something, you know, it's pretty good. I look on Keepa, I look and see how many others had. And if it was anywhere near borderline or just not as high in ROI as I had been buying previously, it could even be at my, my minimum, I would somehow talk myself out of it for whatever reason, if legitimately or, or not. So I was thinking about it this morning and I, I've now decided I'm going for this particular category. And yes, it's going to be a learning curve. And maybe that's why I kept talking myself out of these different things. You know, I'd go to a store and it would be to look at housewares. And then I would just happen by the toy department. And it's so easy for me because I've been doing that for so long. I would just be able to grab up this, this, and this with toys. The problem is... They are usually, you know, one of something or six of something with stickers all over them. And you can't really scale up that way. And if I'm going to meet my numbers from last year or preferably beat them, I need to be finding much more product than I'm finding at this time. So I don't want to just go for the low-hanging fruit of clearance toys or, or limited number of toys which normally those are the ones that you can get a much higher ROI on. So, I've decided even if it even if it takes a month or two to be really learning this category, I am going to just work at it and just buy a certain number every week, but know that, you know, I may have to spend 6 or 8 hours at a store and only come home with a few hundred dollars worth of profit or a thousand dollars worth of profit. And instead of, you know, in the past where I might have run into a store and that only took me 30 minutes. But eventually I'll get there. So I, that's it. You know, I've decided this. I'm going to go for this category. I'm not necessarily going to talk about exactly what I'm going to be selling, but I will keep you up with how my progress is going on that. In the meantime, today I'm going to do my regular sourcing. I've got a few hundred dollars in Kohl's cash, so I need to spend that and be, you know, I'll be looking at clothing there. Uh, so that's what I have for today. I've got, like I said, I think I have 18 stores listed, and most of them are about 50 miles from the house in another direction. I'm not going south this time. Um, so I will be, you know, just working a regular day today. And then I'm really going to sit down and make out a plan for what stores I'm going to start sourcing at. What's my goal at the beginning? Because it's going to have to be smaller at the beginning. And, you know, I'm just going to expect to have either steady sales, you know, maybe matching last year's, maybe even being a little lower. But within a month or two, I really want to, you know, start racking it up. And this is probably a higher average selling price 
So once I really get rolling, I don't think that I it will take me all that long to be hitting those sales again. Um, you know, catching up for this year and even doing better than last year. So, you know, think about where you are in your business. You know, last night I had Jared on the show. If you haven't seen it, we talked about hiring employees. When it's time to think about it, it wasn't so much of the paperwork, bookkeeping type of thing, because Jared does, you know, consulting with small businesses, and it, it helps to have a second person kind of looking at, you know, your numbers, and is this something you can afford? Can you afford to have an employee? Are you close to being able to afford that? And look at it differently, like, he looks at it two different ways. Is it going to help your sales, like, you have somebody coming in doing your prep and you're paying them $10 an hour, but you can be out shopping and buying, you know, $100 profit an hour. So you're having a gain there of $90 an hour. Or is it just somebody taking, you know, admin work off of you and it's not necessarily direct sales dollars, but again, it can be freeing you up to be doing other things. So anyway, if you have if you have any inkling of of having helpers come, or maybe even you know in fourth quarter, um, you might want to just take a listen to that. So that was Tuesday, Mar May twenty <laughs> second. Um, you know I have that reseller. Don't know what the calendar date is. I do know it's Wednesday today, and I know that the we did the show yesterday on Tuesday night. It's close to May 22nd if it's not that date. So, yeah, if you want to go back and take a listen to that and think about growing your business. We've been trying on the Tuesday and Thursday morning shows to talk a little bit more about growing your business versus, you know, just the beginner. Because it seems like that's on every channel and we've talked about it over and over and over. Where to start, where to start. Um, so we've tried to, I think maybe we're all in transition everybody on the show, you know, Steve is, is ramping up. I think Scott is looking more for a little more freedom with employees. John is trying to get out of his business altogether and just have other people run the business. And I'm, I would say I'm at that ramping up. Um, Re-looking re at my goals for the year because things have really changed. I, I stayed too long in that transition period. And yes, you know, part of it was because I was home with Paul and things were changing. And But I'm really at that time now where I need to just get off the fence and work it. Whether it ends up being the right transition to make or not, I, I can't just stay in this transi transition and stuck period of I'm not sure where I want my business to go. Because it definitely won't grow that way. So, you know, it's, it's now May. We're in the second quarter of the year. Um, fourth quarter is fast approaching. Third quarter sales will be up as well. So it's really maybe time to stop and take stock in what did you decide in January about your business and how is that going and are there changes that need to be made. I am going to cut out here because traffic is getting heavier and I'll get back to you throughout the day and just let you know how I do. Okay, I'm back. I've been shopping about nine hours today. It's like 8.30 at night. I don't know. It might be more than that. No, about nine hours, I think. Um, today was the first day. It's been over 90 degrees this year, and it was like 94. So I am rather melted. It's been pretty hot. So hot that the little stand that is uh, glued, not really glued, it's got... I don't know what you call it. Anyway, glued down to my dashboard, melted off. So I'm holding this with my hand so it won't be too, too long. Um, a newbie mistake today. I did my end route. I started out, like I said, I was doing these quick stops at grocery stores looking for one item, which was my first mistake. Because there's another item I was going to check to see if it was on sale this week. And I only checked at about the fourth store. 
I don't think I'm going to go back to those other ones. There's lots of grocery stores all over Atlanta. So, uh, but yeah, I should have done that. But my newbie mistake was I was running in, looking at the clearance rack. Didn't find any. Second store, didn't find any. Third store, didn't find any. Actually, I think the third store, one of those stores, I went to five or six. And I did find the refills to what I'm looking for. Um, but then I thought about it at like the fifth store. Let me check the regular aisle and see if they're still in there. And I found a couple there. So might have missed some at those first few stores. But they're stacking up, so I've got plenty. But the other smart thing I did was I'm having a, a good day. A little above average not not like a fantastic day like I had last Thursday or Friday I have bought stuff everywhere I've been except those few grocery stores where I didn't find anything but I wasn't even in there five minutes but I I'm in Snellville Georgia and I was coming down the main road I don't know what it's called but the traffic was terrible and I mean it was 7 7 15 at night on a Wednesday so I don't know what's going on it's always heavy but not that bad so I these shopping centers are so hard to find things it's just not one long row of stores it's sort of up and down and around the corner and I was following my google maps to try and find Kohl's and I I still haven't found it yet <laughs> but I pulled in and it was like oh there's that store I kind of have on my list to be checking this item I hit the mother load. I mean, I think I probably spent, okay, so 750. I might have spent 40 minutes in there, but I for sure made easily $500. Small items, um, more than 100% ROI on most of them. So, yeah, I was pretty excited about that. And then I just ran into the grocery store and got five of that item that I'm looking for for $5 less than everywhere else. So yeah, I'm still looking for the coals, and they're still open another hour and a half. Um, haven't had dinner yet, but I have some grapes in my cooler. I think I have water and grapes left. But I'm definitely going to finish coals and look at my end route. I think I'm up to like 18, my 18th store. I did actually skip a couple grocery stores because every time I would open the back of my car, I was like, oh yeah. The eBay packages I need to ship out. Oh yeah, the eBay packages I need to ship out. Usually I do them either first thing in the morning or right at the end of the day. And I went out with my husband yesterday afternoon and we forgot to bring them with us and got home after five. Which is fine because I have two day handling now. So nothing was late. I really like the two day handling just for that reason. Um, I, I normally, I mean, sometimes I ship something an hour after I get it. If I get them in the morning and I'm doing shipping, I go ahead and add it. I don't hold anything. And I get a lot of nice feedback saying, you know, fast shipping, because they don't even think I'm going to ship it for a couple days. But that also, just like yesterday, I ended up, I had them all packed up and ready to go. And then we went out for lunch, and then we ended up going somewhere. And so, and then we ended up stopping at a few stores. <laughs> Needless to say, my post office used to stay open until 6, but now they only stay open until 5. So, that's kind of a pain sometimes. And I was a little concerned because the last time I realized I still hadn't shipped my packages, it was 4.11. And I was scrambled to try and find a post office nearby. It was about, it was 17 minutes away from where I was, but it was at least in the direction that I had to go. So, I... Um, headed to the post office and that one was open till 6 which was really nice I didn't have to worry about shipping those out and I went ahead and scanned them in just to make sure because I didn't want to take the chance that they wouldn't get scanned until tomorrow and give me a late so now I am headed over to the Kohl's I'm trying really hard not to go back to the Freddy's and get an ice cream cone but we shall see and I'll come back to you tomorrow and maybe talk to you a little bit more about transition. See you later. Hey everybody, I just wanted to kind of wrap up my video from yesterday. So I was talking about being stuck in that transition stage 
and I've really come to some conclusions on what I want to do with my Amazon as well as eBay. I've, I've kind of worked on the eBay now and gotten a little, little more automated, um, gotten myself out of some of the work, uh, the listing part of it basically. Still thinking that I want to add somebody to do the photographs, um, but right now I'm sort of stepping back and getting my Amazon store up to par. We've talked about it a lot of times that it's kind of hard to run both of them. You concentrate on one and then the other one kind of slacks off. But here's the thing, at the beginning of the year, I had goals and I had them in my head and I said I was gonna write them down and I never did. And I was like, it's cool, I got them in my head. But the more that I've thought about it over the last few days where I've finally decided which way I wanna turn, because that's been another thing. I've been just back and forth, back and forth talking myself out of every change that I want to make. And now I've decided I'm going to head towards one particular category. Um, changing out of more toy. I, I mean, I'm stuck on toy. Nothing wrong with toy. Um, but my sources that I used to source, I no longer have. And I feel like it's just a little more cutthroat than it used to be in the toy category. I've never really been all out for that hot toy but I just feel like prices have dropped all together with toy and I feel like I can make more money I, I just don't want to work quite as hard um, I want to you know make good money but I want to I don't want to say it like I want to work the least amount possible because I'm still working hard but I don't want to go after those onesies and twosies and that kind of thing so anyway I've decided on a category so now I'm going to sit down and put on paper and you can, you can count that <laughs> as accountability. Just like when I said in 14 days, I'm going to have a repricer and I did, I'm going to say today in 14 days, I'm going to have a written plan for my goals and be working on that. Um, I had said that I have an accountability partner. But actually, we both kind of fell flat on that in the last couple of weeks. We haven't talked. So I am going to give her a call and we're going to set a, a day each week and put a little more specifically what we have to do to keep each other accountable. Or I'll have to find a different one. Or you can all keep me accountable. <laughs> so look for another video, you know, just talking about the process of writing things down. I'll tell you that a few things have, have spurred in my mind. Um, I watch, if you don't watch Groove Master, um, Phil out of Nashville, it's, he gives some thought provoking coffees with Phil. Um, and you know, he gave me a call yesterday and we talked about getting a lister. And one of the things when you're trying to add employees or add help contract or employee, you had, you do have to give up a little bit of control. And I think that's just as hard for some as you know just stepping out there and getting employees so you know I feel good about giving up a little bit of control on the listing I think I can do the same with photographs and then I'm definitely gonna have first this week I have my employee coming two days and hopefully she can start that every week to help me process and I might not have to add another person um, if she can uh, week after week come two days a week. Um, but I, I'm thinking in third quarter or fourth quarter, I'm going to need, well, third quarter leading into fourth quarter, I'm going to need another person as well. So I really want to get out of the processing business for myself. And, you know, we'll just see how things go. And you can keep me accountable. And I'm going to wrap up for today, start and get a little dark. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. Thanks.